Hey guys, welcome back to AutoX. So today we've got a very special set of cars for us. So in the last 12 months, the mid-size sedan segment has heated up. It all started when Honda relaunched a new version of the City. And then, a couple of months later, Hyundai came back and launched a brand new version of the Verna. Fast forward a couple of months and Toyota came in with the all-new Yaris, making a pretty bold statement. And now, Maruti is joining the fight by bringing in the CS. And they've also brought in a brand new 1.5 liter petrol engine. The Yaris as well comes only in a petrol variant. And that's why we've got all the petrol variants of these cars here with us today to find out which one is the best mid-size sedan in India. So I can tell you right now that my favorite car of the entire lot is the Hyundai Verna. And that's because this is a driver's car. As soon as you get inside the Verna, you feel the premium quality of the car. And the most important thing for me is that the seat goes very low. So you feel like you're down towards the road, you're down on the ground. And everything else, the ergonomics just feels like a proper driver's car. The rear seat of this car doesn't have so much space. So in terms of the interior space and comfort, it's not really the best. But when you're in the driver's seat, it is certainly the best car in this segment, without a doubt. Everything feels nice. The steering wheel feels great in your hands. The seat is very comfortable. It's got great support. You've got a lot of leg room and everything is exactly where you want it to be. Um, the engine is a 1.6 liter petrol. It's got a six speed torque converter transmission that works very well. You can put it in manual mode as well and you can take control of that. But obviously this is the most powerful engine in this segment and it does not disappoint. Now the Verna's engine is very smooth and very refined and it has a nice big punch. It pulls forward with ease and it's very quick. The transmission also makes the necessary change changes readily and it feels relaxed while doing so. The Verna certainly offers the best engine performance in this entire segment. The suspension setup is superb and the handling is a little more direct compared to the handling of the other cars. It's obvious that the Verna is the most fun car to drive in this segment. In terms of overall design and styling, the Verna looks much sportier and the overall quality is also far superior to the CS. The Verna doesn't just look more premium, but it also feels more premium. The overall build quality of the dashboard is far more impressive. Competing in a very challenging segment, the CS certainly exceeds expectations when it comes to the overall build quality and use of components in the cabin. On the outside, it gets new LED lights and tail lights, a new grille, 16-inch dual-tone alloys, and added chrome to make it look dashing and have a strong road presence. On the inside, the quality levels seem quite nice too. The wood in the dashboard is now lighter and there is a new 4.2-inch TFT color screen between the two dials on the instrument panel that is very attractive. So I've actually been driving the Sia's the most over the last few days. This is the new 1.5 liter petrol unit. It gets about 103 bhp and it's a very nice engine. It also gets Suzuki's new smart hybrid technology. That's obviously to improve the emissions and uh, fuel economy. But the engine feels very nice. So what really impressed me is the ride quality of the Sia's. It's a very smooth ride. It's a very comfortable flying ride. Even the suspension setup, it's soft and you can go fast over bumps without feeling much. People in the back seat won't be bothered by much of the bad roads we have here in India. But driving it also, it's very comfortable to drive in the city. It's very nice on the highway, very stable at very high speeds. The handling is nice. It's a little bit on the relaxing side. It's not sporty in nature by any way, but it's a very impressive car. Maruti Suzuki has done a great job with the Sia's. The price of this car it comes at, it's also the best value for money for sure. It's got great features. It feels nice in the car. It actually looks premium, but it doesn't feel very premium. That's the one downside I would say. So the seat doesn't go down low as, as I wanted it to. So for tall drivers, it is a bit of a problem because you do feel like you're a little cramped. But otherwise, everything else is comfortable. I've sat in the back seat. There's plenty of space. You will have a very nice ride if you're going on a long road trip somewhere sitting in the back. If you have a chauffeur driving you around, you'll be very comfortable. If you want, are driving this car every day, it's also very comfortable. So yeah, it's a good car, good value for money car for sure. And that's the reason why the Sia's is one of the best selling cars right now in the segment. Now the Yaris has made it to the 7-speed CVT in our test car and this engine transmission combo works very well in urban areas. Driving around in traffic is a breeze and the transmission works very well. However, on the highway, gear switches tend to take some time. The ride quality is top-notch but there is no involvement or excitement from the engine or the steering. The Toyota Yaris, which is the latest model to enter the segment, also offers a much more premium experience than the CS. While the exterior design isn't too stylish and the car doesn't really have much road presence, the cabin, on the other hand, is very nice. The seats are very comfortable and there is plenty of room for all passengers. The overall finish of the dash is simple, but it certainly looks top-notch when it comes to luxury. In this segment, the Yaris is perhaps the most impressive when it comes to comfort and quality. 
So the petrol automatic version of the Yaris, which is what we're driving right now, is the most expensive car we have with us. It's obviously a very premium car on the inside. It feels very nice. Everything looks and feels amazing. What I like about the Yaris though, out of compared to the other cars, is that it's got paddle shifters. So if you want to change the seven speed uh, automatic CVT into manual mode, you just have the paddle shifters, which actually work very nice. Gear shifts are nice and smooth, and obviously you get a much more of a sporty feel. But unfortunately, the engine doesn't really provide that grunt like the Verna does, but uh, it's still a very nice engine, a very smooth ride. Acceleration is pretty good. It's got a good mid-range and the power delivery, you know, you get it whenever you want. But I would have to say it's not the most engaging car to drive. It is very comfortable though. I actually like the seats. The driver's seats in this are the most comfortable if you're driving in the city. It's also a very spacious car. It's got lots of headroom. And what's even better is that if you're sitting in the back seat, you actually have these very nice rear AC vents here that give you a great air circulation. Lots of space in the back seat as well. So once again, if you are not looking to drive the car yourself, this is a great car because you can get a driver and you can enjoy the luxury of sitting in a nice spacious car, which feels premium all over. The suspension is actually soft for the city. It's great. It feels nice. It's a well-planted car. The steering wheel feels very nice in your hands. It is slightly on the soft side again. So yeah, it's a good car. Unfortunately, it's not as fun to drive. A lot of good things for it. It's got great features and it feels very premium. The Honda City is probably the least impressive when it comes to exterior and interior design, but it still maintains a premium feel. At one point in time, the Honda City was the crown king of the segment, but that no longer seems to be the case. The City was last updated early in 2017, and because of that, it doesn't feel as fresh and modern as the news entrance into the segment. Still though, it's comfortable on the inside, but doesn't really feel or look as good as the newer cars in the segment. So when the Honda City first made its entrance into India, it was one of the most sought after sedans and it had great performance. And at that time it was very good looking. But today the facelift that was launched about a year ago is not very impressive to be honest. The design is more or less the same. The interior still remained to be a little prehistoric compared to the other cars we have with us. And it does not feel as premium as it once did. I think that's mainly because, you know, the market has changed and products today Customers demand a lot more premium feel inside the cabin. Unfortunately, Honda hasn't been able to capitalize on that because it's been a year now. So maybe when they launch the next city, it could be better. But coming to the engine, actually the engine of the Honda City is very nice. This is the 1.5 liter petrol engine and it's got about 117 bhp. So it is the second most powerful engine we have here with us. It's got a great feel. It feels very refined. The power delivery is very nice and I'm driving the manual version right now. And I actually like the way the gear lever feels. The clutch is a little too light for my liking, but switching between between gears and driving in traffic is very comfortable. The steering obviously is very light. It's the least engaging out of all the cars we have. And it's a very lazy performer when it comes to handling. And overall, it just doesn't perform as good as the other cars do. But again, this is the oldest car out of the lot we have. The other ones are much newer and they come with a lot more features. Obviously, it's very spacious in the car. Um, the rear seat is not as comfortable as I would like. The driver's seat is very nice, it's feel is very comfortable, got good back support, good leg support. It doesn't have that much character anymore. The other cars have a lot more character and have a lot more plus points in the Honda City. I wouldn't say it's a bad car at all. It's got, you know, the engine is phenomenal. The way it drives, it's great, it's comfortable. So the ultimate question now is which one of these cars is the best mid-size sedan in the country? Well, the CS has been the best seller for a very long time now. Now that it's got an upgrade with the new engine, it still seems that it is a phenomenal car. The overall package is great and the price range is very aggressive. So the CS still will be one of the best sellers because of the badge that it carries, obviously. But to be very honest, I've driven the car and I really am impressed with it. The ride quality, the way the engine performs, it's a very nice car and it's very comfortable and it looks nice. Moving on to the Toyota Yaris, it is a premium car, of course, and it is the most expensive here in the segment. But there are a few things I don't like about it, but the engine is great, the inside is comfortable, but again, it's not the most attractive car in this entire segment. The Honda City, for me, was the most disappointing. It does seem like it still is living in the past. The interiors are not up to the standard that I like. And uh, the best thing about it, though, is the engine, of course. Other than that, it's just not as attractive, again, as the other cars here. Now, without a question of doubt, the best car we have here is the Hyundai Verna. If you're a driver, if you like performance, the Hyundai Verna is definitely what you're looking for. It may not have the comfort. It is the most premium car here. And the features that it offers are just amazing. So it all depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking to be driven around in a car, 
car with the driver, and you can go for any of these, to be honest. If you want space and comfort, the Yaris, the Sias are perfect for you. But if you're looking to be driving the car yourself, and you are an aggressive driver, or you want some kind of sportiness, the Verna is the first choice for sure. The Sias is more of a comfortable drive. It's a great car to drive as well. But honestly, if you really want some kind of oomph and some kind of X factor and anything, the Verna is definitely the winner today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to put them down in the comment section below. And also, if you want to read a more comprehensive review, you can head to autox.com. And make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.